A lot of people that aren't used to chronomid fishing or just starting out or don't understand it, they relate watching an indicator to watching paint dry. But in reality, watching that indicator, when you have the right fly at the right depth, it spends a lot of time underwater than sitting on the surface. So it's an extremely effective way to catch trout and char under an indicator and especially with chronomids. And that just tells you that there's some science behind what we're doing there. And that's what makes it so fascinating. Today was the first time I've ever spent time with April fishing. It was wonderful to talk with her about her fishing experiences and how she grew up being addicted to fishing, very similar to my youth. I could see glimpses when we were speaking that he got really excited. Like, at times his voice changed pitch. He kind of became like a little kid. And now today, to be out here with him, I totally see it. He is like fishing with, not a little kid, but definitely a very enthusiastic young man. Look at, look at him, look at him. He's coming at you hot. Got him. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's quite quiet, he's a very humble guy, and then when you spend the day with them and you see just how excited he gets, it kind of throws you off, but it's really refreshing, especially to see somebody who's so renowned in their field, who could be taken so seriously as a biologist, and just to see him come to life like that, it's contagious. So what makes chronomid pupil fishing so fascinating and so addictive to so many anglers is that there's literally over 2,500 species of chronomids living in North American rivers and lakes. What we need to understand as fly tires and as anglers is that the chronomid pupa come in a variety of colors and sizes. And fish are not colorblind, so we have to use throat sampling techniques to work backwards. We see the color of the pupa in their throat or in their, in their gut, and then that we marry that color to the flies that we have in our box. So it's all about size and color and critically depth presentation. Only Hawkins, only after you catch a fish. So oh, we've both caught a fish. Here, so we... These are my favorite. <laughs> they're my favorite. They're so, they're Canadian, aren't they? I didn't know much about Brian until this trip, really, to be able to sit down with him and podcast him and then share a boat with him. It's so cool to see that he's just an avid fisherman just like us, except he's incredibly knowledgeable about the lakes and the fish, but obviously the insects as well. He's just a fine-tuned trout machine.